I'm going to be playing a few other different games. One of the games that I've been playing is uh, this Warhammer TCG. This is uh, a digital and physical card game that uh, plays on mobile. So I play it at the gym a lot and they they just released a new set. So I've been I've been poking at this. This uh this game unfortunately does not have a mouse over overlay, so I will I will pull up some of the cards as we're playing them and explain some of the basics. Hey, what's going on, Day Nine? Hope life is treating you swell. What's this game about? This is uh, the IP is the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. And um, one of the really neat things this game does is because they have a physical component, or waiting for this match to pop, all of their physical cards have uh, these little dots around the corner of them. So when you buy a card in physical, you scan them in to the paper, to the digital version. So any cards you buy in physical, you get the same card in digital, which is which is kind of novel. This game has uh, four sets, and they just released their fourth set. It plays, it plays really well on mobile because the four-lane grid system that it plays on uh, translates well to smaller screens. One of my, probably my only complaint about the game is because they're a small studio that works on it, like actually a small, small company. Um, their desktop version here, the interface is a little bit gaudy because it's a direct port of their mobile client, but it plays well and the gameplay is good. So I mostly, I mostly play on my phone and my tablet. Yeah, yeah, it's neat. Um, and when you when you have cards in paper that you scan in, you actually earn extra in-game currency to buy extra digital cards with, which is neat. Yeah, so they uh, they have their they have a version that you can install through Steam, but it's a direct it's a direct port of the of the mobile game. So one of the things I really like about this game is the resource system is fairly unique. There's not a mana system like you have in a lot of games. So the basics of the resource system are really straightforward to explain. Basically, you get to each player gets to do two things every single turn. And those two things are uh, playing a card, activating an ability that some cards have, or drawing a card. So unlike Magic and a lot of other games, you don't automatically draw a card every turn. Instead, drawing a card is one of the two things you do for, for your turn. The gameplay itself is played on uh, these four lanes that you can see here on the screen. Each deck has four champions in it, and that's part of something that you build, you pick while you're building your deck. And the start of the game is alternating back and forth, placing these champions. They do have different effects depending on what they are. Can you mix and match or only mix? In what uh, what aspect? So uh, there's two different types of champions. There's red champions, which are warrior champions. And then there's blue champions, which are wizards. And depending on what they are, that determines which cards they can play. There's also um, there's also some champions that are both. Yes, yeah, you can you can mix and match. You can play one card, draw one card. You could play two cards. You could draw two cards. So you can do do either or. So the basics of the way in which you want to play your cards. My deck is a wizard's deck, so I've got a lot of spells and abilities in it. And whatever symbol is at the top of these cards kind of indicates what I'm interested in doing on those cards on each of those turns. So, for instance, all three of my wizards here want me to play a spell on them to get started to complete their first quest. And what questing does for your champions as you play the cards is when you complete all four quests on a champion, they flip up what's referred to as their blessing card, which gives you a powerful effect. So I'm going to play a card here as one of my things for the turn, and then I'm going to end my turn and draw a card. So uh, the way the turn sequence goes in this game is... 
How long do games usually last? Uh, sub 15 minutes. They're, they're pretty quick. So each, each of the, each of your champions can have one spell or unit deployed in front of it here. So this card here, let's take a look at my Flock of Doom. This card, um, this card here, the first corner has an X in it, which means it doesn't do anything on the first turn I play it. And then at the start of your turn, all of your cards in play turn counterclockwise once and go to their next, their next corner. And this card says it deals damage to my opponent equal to the number in the corner. So in the top right here, it does five. So this turn to the five corner and did five damage uh, to my opponent. Except there are some other cards. There's So while there's not instants in this game, there is a lot of interaction that's positioning base. So this card that my opponent played here, it cares about the lane directly across from it and the ones on either side. And it shields my opponent from three damage on those lanes. So even though this says do five, it did five minus three. So it did two to them. I have, a, I have a timer ticking here, so I'm going to play a couple of cards while we're explaining. So I can play a spell here, which completes this first quest. And then this card here has a special has a special ability that says whenever it deploys a spell, I basically get to rummage. So when I deploy this spell here, I have the option to discard a card from my hand to draw another new card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So my opponent's going to show... How, how the turn sequence works here. So at the start of their turn, all of their cards rotate. And this card says it deals two damage on its second corner. And then it goes to the left. And this card says draw two cards. And then it gets rid of itself. Uh, the way the Warhammer universe is set up, there's four different factions in, in the game. And your deck includes cards from uh your deck will generally include cards from will can include card from one of those factions and then neutral cards that all the factions can use so this card does five damage when it turns and then one thing that's kind of a neat trick so this card in addition to drawing me two cards it lets me swap the position of two of my champions i have in play so I'm going to take this, this one and this one and swap their lane positions. And the reason why you do this is the way this game works, it resolves all the cards from left to right. So even though this card already triggered, if I use this card to swap it to the right, it triggers a second time. I'm still under the magic category. Thank you. I appreciate you. I updated the title. There, now the game category is updated. All right, so this guy, normally wizards can't, um, so this guy has two quests left. So let's go ahead and finish questing this. So this is an ability. So I'm going to go ahead and play my Celestial Fate over here which lets me look at the top four cards of my deck. And then I draw one of them into my hand. And then the other three, I can either put back on top of my deck in the same order or shuffle. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep these as another ability here. And this guy has some abilities I would like to I'd like to trigger. Yeah, yeah, this game, um, one of the things I really like about this game is even though it fits well on a mobile screen. It has a lot of depth to the gameplay captured in a small board. So when I play that spell there, it flips up my blessing card. And the ble blessings are cards that you include in your deck. So I've picked four blessings, but I don't get to know which champions my blessings end up underneath during the game. So that's one of the variance elements that this game has. You don't know where your blessings are at, basically. So instead of having resource variance, there's that. I know I have these powerful effects, but I don't know guaranteed which one I'm going to get. And this card, for example, every turn for three turns, it draws me a card and gains me two life, which is, generally speaking, the blessing effects are more powerful than cards you can put into your deck because you have to work to make them happen. 
So this gains me two and draws me a card. This deals five damage. One of uh, one of the things that's good to know about this game in comparison to Magic is one of the things we say in Magic a lot is your health totals. Your health totals a resource, right? So in this game, the health total is much closer to being a scoreboard than it would otherwise be in Magic, just by um, the virtue of uh, how the, the resource system plays out. We only get to do two things per turn. So being being ahead on health total in this game is more beneficial and a, uh, more of a sign that you're winning than it would be in something like Magic. So this card is, is a positional card. So it does three damage when it comes into play. And then until my next turn when it goes away, I take two less damage from the lane directly across from this and on either side of it here. This is an ability card, which is, this is a card from their fourth set that's really powerful. So I play this card here and it helps me quest really quickly. So I play an ability which satisfies this quest and then the card itself automatically rotates through the next one. There's, a, there's no turn one kills in this game. In fact, um, how is the RNG in general? There are a lot of games where they feel like uh, random number generation. I feel like a lot of the games that I play with... The games that I play that don't feel close are games where my deck isn't very good, if that makes sense. Does that do rotate? A highlighted unit two steps forward. Sure. This is not magic. That is that is correct. All right. So they're at nine. This flock of doom does five next turn, potentially. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I can play this Forgotten Arts here, which completes two quests because playing it as an ability completes this one. And then it rotates through the next one as the part of the card resolving. What does their blessing do? So Heroic Acts, for one of their actions for the turn, rotate a highlight unit one step forward. If this triggers a damage, increase it by three. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, this game, I agree with what Zugwa said. This game, if both players are playing reasonable decks, both uh, there's very few non-games in this game. So I play this here. Yeah, yeah, this is, this, because this runs on Unity Engine, it's on basically everything. It's on Android, iOS, Steam, and Switch. And it has, uh, has an OSX client on, uh, on Steam. What is a highlighted unit? That's a good question. So in this case, you can see the different uh, grid squares on the bottom of this card, the four green grid squares. So a lot of the control elements in this game are very position based. So the green ones indicate the green ones indicate um, your units on your side, whereas red squares refer to your your opponent's side. So this card did five, so we're gonna looks like we're gonna win this game. So uh, my ability here, Dance of Doom, re-triggers the current effect on on here, which also flips up a blessing, which kills them as well. Yep, yeah, yeah, it is it is cross-platform. Yeah, you can link your accounts on everything. In fact, one of the things that's really nice is uh, similar to how. Um, Similar to how, uh, what's it called? Um, Underlords works. You can start a game on the computer, close the application, then reopen on your phone and continue playing. So if you link, you can link your account across all the platforms. Just put my block of cheese back in the fridge. What's the cost of entry to get a viable deck slash collection? Um, I don't really, I don't, I don't have a good metric offhand. So I, I ended up picking up a bunch of paper cards at, um, 
at Gen Con uh, the first year that it released. So a lot of my stuff has been scanned, scanned into the game. So I don't have a good metric for what exactly is the the dollary dollary due amount for a given. I also I also a new set just released, so I don't know exactly what a good a good deck consists of because it's just like when a new when a new magic set released, things get shaken up. I've been building the Chaos Quick Quest deck, and I've spent maybe twenty maple syrup dollars. <laughs> Um, one of the things this game has too, if you're someone who's been here from, from the Hex times, this will feel familiar to you. They have, uh, this Realm Trials thing where you can play kind of a, a campaign story mode with different added bonuses and you can earn, you earn currency and cards and stuff playing through the single player mode that you can use in, in the PVP. I don't, I don't really touch this because I'm not big on playing against computers. Yeah, I've been I've been losing a lot because I keep I keep trying I keep trying different different deck ideas. This wizard deck that I'm playing right now has been the most powerful and consistent thing that I've played this season. Ah, uh, champions! One of their one of their community members. These are deck lists from their previous season. This, this is one of their community run sites, Champion Forge. So those deck lists aren't updated with cards from the fourth set, but I'd imagine most of them are still good. Yeah, that's Pelly. Yeah, that's the that's the undead deck that floop, floops risen back into play, right? This has been this has been my treadmill game of choice. Usually, usually when I go to the gym, I walk on the treadmill for like I don't know, forty five minutes to an hour, and I play somewhere between two and four games depending on what I'm doing. I turned off I turned off subscriber only chat for folks who are non subs that would like to chat. Usually usually we have a smaller audience when we do non magic games, so it's less it's less of a disaster when we do that. During during magic things get things get crazy sometimes, so Freedom So if you're gonna hang out, feel free to chat. This game is on phones. In fact, the reason why the interface is a little bit gaudy compared to uh, other PC games is because it's a direct port from the mobile version. So it you can play it through Steam, but it does it does play on Android and iOS. In fact, the place I play the most is on my Android phone. How long before we can make absolutely absurd card recommendations in this game? Well, the fun part about this game is I wouldn't know if they're absurd or not necessarily. I'm still I'm still trying to figure things out. So one of the things I really like about this game is the depth of the, de the decisions you make starts immediately because a lot of these decks have different ways they want to position the champions depending on what they're doing. So for example, this champion here that I have, it has a drawback where it says if the champions on either side of it are engaged, have something in front of them, his spells do less damage. So it's important when you're positioning with this deck that I'm playing that this Master of Warlocks always goes next to Liberator Prime. And the reason for that is my deck isn't playing any units. So this lane is always going to be empty. So basically by positioning this way, I avoid his drawback. Hey, thanks, Sassy. I appreciate it. Good to have you here. This plays an ability, gain an additional action. This can only be triggered once per turn. It's really powerful. What's the life total? That's a good question. So, um, in this game, the champions that you pick for your deck 
dictate what your starting life total looks like. So every one of these champions, when I click on it here, there's a red number and a green number. The red number is how playing this champion modifies your starting health total from 30. And the bottom number is how many points this champion is worth to play. So this costs seven, this costs uh, six, this costs six. So the sum total of all of your champions needs to be... Um, What's the word I'm searching for? It needs to be less than uh, less than 20, less than or equal to 20. Do highlighted spaces warp or do you want that reduced range? So the highlighted spaces don't warp, but they just don't count. So if you put this guy in the corner, he'll reduce his damage if just this guy to his left is occupied, which is not ideal. So I can go ahead, I played this card to complete this first quest. We'll play Forgotten Arts, which completes two quests in a row. Is there a swamp butt? So some of the names in Hex were really something. So because you don't draw cards every turn in this game, for a lot of decks, it's not uncommon for them to do what my opponents just did there, which is basically take a turn off to draw cards and figure out what they're doing. That being said, one of the benefits of this current deck that I'm playing is it generally doesn't have to do that. Because we have a lot of cards and effects in our, in our blessings that draw us cards. Like this Celestial Fate looks at my top four and lets me draw one. I'm going to go ahead and take this Righteousness here. And then, huh? I think I'm going to shuffle the rest of those. I don't think I really want to draw Steed of Shadow Doom for I'm looking for things that deal a little bit more damage here. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these. And then this guy has two quests left, but one's an ability. So again, Forgotten Arts is super powerful because it completes the ability quest. And then it... So it's kind of different from Ponder because it doesn't let you rearrange the remaining three cards. And again... Most of our blessings draw us cards. Like this one gains us six life and draws us three cards. So this deck, again, doesn't take that many opportunities to... Um, it deals four and removes my units, but I don't have any of those. This thing deals two on the first corner. And then the second two corners, it doesn't do anything, but it explicitly can't be removed. And the final corner, it does, it does four damage. All right, so what do I want to do here? I might actually be able to kill my opponent next turn, huh? So if I set this Flock of Doom up here, and then I set the Steed of Shadows up here, I could do like I did in that previous game where um, we have this deal five, and then we swap it over here and it deals another five. And then this triggers the active effect of a spell. So it'll deal five with this. And then this will deal three. So we'll do five, five. Mm. Silly opponent interacting with me. Rude. So the cards keep rotating until they go past their fourth corner. Or until they hit a blank corner. So this card deals five. And then the next turn it'll rotate off and go away. This card does two damage on the first corner. The second corner, it gains two health. And then on the third corner, it makes things dormant that are kitty corners. So it'll dormant this and this. So this is a card where on the first three corners, it doesn't do anything. And on the last corner, it does eight damage. But it explicitly rotates faster every time someone next to it plays a spell. No, so this card, once it gets past its fourth corner, it disappears. So cards cards that have four corners go away after um, 
after they rotate past their fourth quarter. So this will go to four, and then it'll go away after that. Now, this is a little dangerous to put here, I guess, because this is on a removal corner, so if they have another removal spell... You want to reactivate flock? You think so? If I reactivate flock, it puts them to eight. And then I can't kill them with these. Yeah, I think I just kill them if they don't have removal. I'm going to go ahead and play righteousness here, which does three and prevents damage from these. And it rotates this forward. And then next turn, this will rotate to the third corner. And if I can play another spell here, which I can, it'll rotate to the last one. This, uh, this game is made by the same company that, that makes Light Seekers. Sweet. So it looks like my opponent's dead here. So this card goes away. This card goes away because they hit empty corners. This card goes to its next corner. And then I can play my Light of Sigmar here, which, again, this card, whenever I de de deploy a spell on either side of it, it rotates an extra step forward. So if I play this here, it ticks this to its deal 8 damage which puts them to four, and then this does four, which kills them. I'd probably be a lot higher ranked than this if I had only been playing this deck. But I keep, I keep like, winning four or five games with this and then, like, changing to something else that I wanted to try out that's much worse. One of, the, one of the things that's really neat about this game is because you can tell how things are going to rotate when you're, when you're playing your cards out it's, and you know how many game actions each player gets each turn, the game really rewards you for being able to think through like what your opponent's likely plays are and what your plays are. And you can plan out a couple of turn sequences in advance a lot of the time. Uh, that's a good question. So leveling cards doesn't have any impact on their power level or what they do in the game. It's just for collecting extra in-game currency. So when you when you scan a paper card into the game and then you play with that card digitally, you get um, it levels up the more you play with it, and the more you play with it, the more uh, the more gold you get. The, the gold is in-game currency that you use for packs and drafting and stuff like that. Buying, buying in-game goodies. You played against Sylvanas. I've not, King Fede. I'm I'm only silver on the ladder, so I don't know that like the decks that I'm playing against are like ideal decks. I also think there's a lot of people that are just like trying out new things just because the new set just dropped. Yes, yeah, there's incentives in the digital game to buy physical cards. That's exactly correct. So the, the first three sets you can buy all physical cards for. Uh, the fourth set that just released, it released digital only first because they're going to take a look at the data from people playing games. They might rebalance some of the cards before they print them in paper. Yeah, yeah. Wiz Wizards will never do that for Arena because they know they can get people to buy their cards twice. So playing this spell on this Warlock Champion first is always really good because playing the spell completes his first quest and then next turn when this spell turns and deals 5 damage, it completes the damage quest, which is great. Good, good 1-2. Anytime you can complete multiple quests on a champion with a single card, it tends to be good. So what does this card do? The X means it does nothing when it comes down. And then it draws cards equal to the number in its corner. So it draws a card on turn two and it draws a card on turn three. And then whenever an opposing highlighted spell or unit rotates off, they draw an extra card. So they'll probably draw them three cards, which is pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and play Doomfire here. 
which lets me discard a card to draw a card. And I, I want this ability because I'm a little bit starved on abilities at the moment. So I think I'm going to bin the Righteousness. Dance of Doom's not bad. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and draw a card here because... This champion has an ability quest and a spell quest left. So what I'll be able to do next turn is I'll be able to play an ability on this champion to complete this quest. And then I'll be able to, to play a spell to complete the last one and flip the blessing over. Which is pretty good. Three, three of the four blessings I've built with. I built this deck with draw cards. So most of the blessings that I flip over are going to give me more gas, which is nice. How does the little positioning box symbol looking at the bottom of some cards work? So, um, take this card, for example. This card just references a single red dot. That refers to this specific lane. So, this card only cares explicitly about this lane rotating off. Take, for example, Righteousness. This has a red dot and then two on either side. So, this card prevents directly across and kitty corner. So I'm going to go ahead and take that line that I talked about last turn. So we'll play my Celestial Fate here to complete this third quest. Let me look at my top four. I'm going to go ahead and just grab another Light of Sigmar here. And then I'm kind of looking for more abilities here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and shuffle these because I don't want to draw more spells at this point. And then I'm going to go ahead and play Light of Sigmar here, which will rotate this to its third corner. So next turn, if they don't have a removal spell, this will deal eight. And then this is actually a little bit unfortunate because I, I mentioned that three of my four blessings draw me cards. So the blessing that flipped up there was my one blessing that only deals damage. So generally speaking, I don't want that to be the last blessing I draw because if that's the last blessing or if that's the first blessing I draw, I, I run out of gas a lot of the time. Oh, you know what? Playing this here and flipping that blessing right away might have been a little bit of a mistake because this card's going to rotate off, which will let them draw a card here next turn. You cannot trigger the same blessing twice. So once that blessing's flipped up, this card just this blessing doesn't do anything anymore. I can still play cards on this champion, but they won't have an effect. So this guy is another one of those positioning-based control cards. On its first corner, it reduces three damage from this lane, this lane, and this lane. So any spells I'd play out here are going to get their damage reduced, which is not ideal. So I think because I'm looking for abilities at the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and draw two for my turn. Now, while neither of these are more abilities that I'm kind of looking for, this Steed of Shadows is a is a card that draws cards which is nice so i assume my opponent's gonna flip up this blessing i think trample underfoot's fine this is the type of card that allows you to put cards in your deck that aren't necessarily good in a in a best of one in a best of one setting and then turn them into something useful so they're also playing an order deck, so they have that same life blast blessing I have, which will help them draw some extra cards here. That is the righteousness card that I have. So it's some overlap in what we have, but they also have some cards that are different. So I'm going to go ahead and play Thunderstrike here. And then uh, we might actually, if they don't have removal, we might get set up to kill them next turn with the old switcheroo. So the Steed of Shadows here will let me switch this to the left to trigger it twice. And then the Dance of Doom will let me do another one. I'm going to ditch this other Doom Fire because it takes a while to get going. And this game's probably going to be over before that card gets going. Oh, they're gaining one. That's awkward. Oh, I guess I guess I have this to deal four as well, right? So this will get to deal five and then five and then five and then four. So this is another one of the draw blessings. It looks like they're probably playing some of the similar blessings that I am. This lets them draw three cards and deal some damage to me. 
They currently have nine cards in their hand. Generally speaking, if you get that many cards in your hand in this game, that probably means you're either getting really unfortunate or your decks may be built a little bit incorrectly. So yeah, so it looks like my opponent's actually going to die with eight cards in their hand here. So this turns and deals five. This lets me flip these two. Which then lets this trigger again because it, it resolves left to right. And then I get to Dance of Doom and trigger this again. And then I get to Light of Sigmar and kill them. Just like hit them for 19 in one turn is not bad. I feel like I really leveled up with this deck, Pelly, when, when you figured out that you could swap with the Shadow Steed. That, that the Shadow Steed double triggering the five balls and the eight balls is really, is really powerful. Double destruction XP weekend. This weekend, get double XP playing against destruction. Hey, that lines up well. Maybe we'll play some destruction after, after this next game. Because I have, I have a weekly quest to play destruction cards for some currency. Toxic! Thank you for the five months of support. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, yeah, that that interaction, I feel like they might they might adjust how Shadow Steed works. Which is one of the reasons I think it's actually a really it's a really good idea that they're they're doing a digital release first, rebalancing, and then doing a physical print run. Uh this is uh Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. It is a physical and digital uh, trading card game that's on uh, Steam and iOS and Android and Nintendo Switch. It is, uh, it's been my uh, treadmill game of choice at the gym recently. So what are the restrictions for creating decks? Yeah, I like this deck a lot. I've lost, I've skipped a few hours of sleep this week playing with, playing with their new cards. So the way um, the deck building in this game works, there's four factions. And you could only include cards from one faction in any given deck. Order, Chaos, Death, and Destruction. And then there's also neutral cards that can be included in with any faction. But the neutral cards have specific, have specific alignments with them. So the neutral cards, there's this Giran and Gur. And there's like five or six at this point. Ogla, Ogla, Ogla. I'm so bad at pronouncing made up words. So your your deck building is you pick a faction that you build around, and then you pick one type of neutral neutral card that you can include in your deck. And between. Mixing and maxing, mix, mixing and maxing and optimizing the point totals on the champions that your deck is playing, and figuring out which blessings you're playing, and then your 30 cards that go in your actual deck. Um, there's there's a lot of depth to the deck building in this game, which is that's one of the things that kind of burned me out when I played Hearthstone. Because I played Hearthstone as my mobile game of choice for a little while, and the depth of deck building in Hearthstone it tends to be pretty shallow. Whereas there's, there's enough knobs and levers in this game, so to speak, that uh, I stay interested and engaged and think. I, I can tell a game is good like Magic when I spend as much time thinking about how I want to build my decks as I do actually playing it. Hey, Corrosion, thanks for the 10 months of support. I appreciate that. Hope your Friday is finding you well. Yeah, I think, I think this deck races Chaos okay. Yeah, this is this is like the peak time to like try other things. Like it's really close to rotation. All the hype's kind of low for Magic, so I've been playing this in my off-stream time. So I figured I might as well play it, play it on stream a little bit too. My for people who are my regulars, my plans for between now and when rotation happens in Magic is I'm going to be 
I'm going to be doing two modern decks every morning, two arena decks every early afternoon, late morning, and then I'm going to be doing a little bit of variety in the afternoons. So I think, again, I want to lead on the Thunderstrike on this guy since I have it. Because it completes his first two quests. This card deals two damage. So I think I'm actually going to go ahead and play Righteousness. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to play Righteousness here. Which, when this guy deploys a spell, I get to I get to rummage. I get to discard a card and then draw a new one. So I'm going to get rid of this extra battle tactics. The client performance on this one is definitely much better than Arena. Because the, the client runs on runs on mobile. So if your application is on mobile, it needs to be. Needs to run it. Arena. That's probably a big part of why Arena won't come to mobile, is because it's not very uh it's not very resource efficient. Alright, so next turn this has an ability ability and then a spell quest. So I can complete this quest next turn. My opponent has a hero called Scarbrand here that while they're at 10 health or less, their abilities deal three extra damage when played on this lane. So one of the things you want to do when you're playing against the opponent's archetype is kind of figure out how can I kill my opponent in one large burst at the end, which thankfully this deck is pretty good at doing burst damage. As you, as you've seen, we've been like... 14 and 15, 15ing people on the last turn of the game. Yeah, Iron Ironheart is very good in this matchup, Pelly. You're not wrong. This does two damage to them and five to me. Might might have a hard time racing here. So this card, when it comes into play, it removes one of their own units. One of Chaos's mechanics is they their units have abilities that trigger when they die. So they have a lot of things that kill their own units. Hmm. So... I think I want to do this. And then the question is, do I want to complete his quest this turn or do I want to like set up Doomfire I, I could complete looking for life blast that's very true so battle tactics here lets me shuffle up to two cards from my hand back into my deck but I think I kind of like all the cards in my hand so I'm going to hang tight on those and just draw one and complete my quest righteousness is not bad righteousness would let me gain two off of this because it prevents damage i think i'm just going to go ahead and do that here so this deals three and kind of gains me two by preventing this which is a good exchange Ooh, that's um interesting so it's a little scary i've been really bad about hitting that as my first one huh so thankfully my opponent only has two cards in their hand. And I guess I guess this gaining them two is pretty good. Yeah, so like some of my opponent's cards, like this uh, Demonic Fury, deal two damage to themselves. So if they get close to ten, they can put themselves under to make this happen. So if you're opposed to giving Games Workshop money, this game is made by a company called PlayFusion. So obviously they're using the, the Games Workshop IP, so I'm sure Games Workshop gets some of the money, but they're not actually the ones developing the cards themselves. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's the plan. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and loot through this, because I don't need a second one. So we'll play we'll play Doomfire here. And then we'll play Flock here. And then Flock rotates this. So then next turn, this will go to here. And then Light will turn it. So this will do 8. And 5 is 13. And then this is uh, 17. Which is nice. So we're, we're hoping they don't have a removal spell here to take care of this. This is kind of the make or break turn. Yeah, if they, if they have removal, we get into trouble here because this is going to drop them to 10, which then turns on the Scarbrand. But if they don't have removal, we kill them. All 
Great. What does your blessing do? Remove highlighted units. Yeah. All right. And you're dead. So this will rotate to its third corner. Oh, wait. They technically still have one more action, right? Sure. Yeah, because beat back. Beat back gives them an extra action. Is that a flock of seagulls? Yeah, basically. It's a flock of doom. They're kind of, they're kind of eagles. Yeah, I had, I had someone spell eater curse me the other night and I was just like, yep, yeah, they wanted it more. So then this card rotates whenever we play a spell. So we get to go ahead and play light here, which does four plus it rotates uh, plus it rotates this to eight. Now the real question is, do I want to lose potentially with my destruction deck, or do I want to keep? I don't. I don't really care about the rank here. Let's uh, let's play some. Let's play some different cards. Oh. My uh. So um, the Warhammer has an official client for. OSX on Steam, but they do not have an official Linux client. So I am running it through Wine like I do um like I do Arena, but this one dumps on occasion through Wine. Let me just reload real quick. Wait, I can chat, get you. And the, the Steam Wine integration is generally pretty good. It actually integrates right through the Steam client, which is great. Although now that it's crashed, it's not letting me restart. I need to restart Steam. What version of Linux I'm using? I'm using uh, an Ubuntu 18.04 based distribution with the uh, Moksha desktop. So, uh, Bodhi Linux is the the default. And it's back. All right. Let's play uh I leave the fire belly deck in a reasonable spot. I think I did. All right. I don't think this deck. I don't. I don't think this deck is very good. But I was having fun with it. So let's give it a try. Uh, clip clipboard fusion is a good clipboard manager for Windows. That's the one I use on my wife's computer when I have to use it on occasion. Mr. Maple Syrup, thank you for the 14 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Happy Friday. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. I'll probably play three or four games with the Fire Belly deck, depending on how long they take. I think I'm going to go till about 2 o'clock or so. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Hope you're having a great start to your weekend. Recently bent from 14.1 Ubuntu to 18x and surprised. There were so many UI changes. There were so many UI changes. I was kind of surprised. Yeah, I use um, XFCE or Moksha as my desktops usually, which have basically looked the same for the last I don't know five five or six years. What happens when you run out of cards in your deck? That's a good question. So the way the game works is when you run out of cards in your deck, the game says, "Did you take an action this turn?" And if you did take an action. That's fine, the game continues. But if there's no cards in your deck and you didn't take an action, you have to either discard a card that you have in play or you lose the game. So you can attrition grind people out of the game. In in past seasons, there were decks that basically ground people out in attrition style. But I don't think there... I haven't seen any this season yet.
So this deck I'm playing is now the Destruction Faction, which is different than the order that we'd previously been playing. So I've got... This deck is a, a mix of Wizards and Warriors, whereas the previous order deck we were playing was just Wizards. So these guys are like the cornerstone of this deck. This says whenever it deploys a unit that's specifically a beast, that unit gets to rotate one step forward immediately as soon as you play it, which is which is really powerful because you get their you get their effects sooner. So one of and this goes back to the positioning things again. One of the spells that I have in this deck. I believe it's called War Call or something like that. It explicitly gives you a bonus if it resolves before the unit that it calls up. So you always want to make sure with this deck that your wizards end up on the left. So that way when you war call with them, you get a you get a bonus on the, the units that you're war calling out. This is artifact. No, this is this is this game is actually good, unlike artifact. So another cornerstone of this deck, this is a fire belly deck, which is named after this champion. So this champion has a heroic act, which I can use once per turn. So one of my actions for the turn can be discarding two cards from my hand to deal five damage to my opponent. And then my deck has a variety of cards like Bellowing Voice in it here that give me some kind of bonus when I discard them or some kind of effect. So this card lets me grab an Ogre out of my deck when I discard it. So I got some, some good deck building synergies there. So this Grot Ambush is excellent synergy with both of these guys. So what it does is it counts as an ability, so it completes the first quest. And then this allows me to search my deck for a Grot card, which I'm actually only playing one Grot because there's only one really good Grot at the moment. And then put this into play here. And then this Grot is also a beast. So I get to skip the first corner because there was a, because there was a beast unit deployed. And this unit, in addition to dealing damage on corners two and four, it gives me extra actions. So even though I played a card for the turn, counting as one of my two actions, this lets me take an extra action, which is excellent. I'm going to go ahead and play this Call of War over here as a spell. And this gets Orc or Grot units out of my deck onto one of my other champions. So this will actually go and get me another Pouncing Wolf Rider for this guy next turn. So if I know I'm going to deploy a beast unit next turn when this happens, I want to go ahead and play an ability here so that way I can complete the first quest and work towards the next. And then battle tactics, I can shuffle some number of cards from my hand into my deck here, but I think I actually want to keep Bellowing Voice, so I'm just going to draw one. Yeah, a lot of, it seems like a lot of, there are some control decks in this game that don't have the goal of questing as quick as possible, but I play this deck, I play this game to play quick games on the treadmill a lot of the time, so a lot of the decks that I tend to enjoy playing are decks that kind of quest quickly and are looking to be a little bit aggressive. So again, just to cover the highlights of how the mechanics of this game work, at the start of my next turn, this card and this card will both rotate to their next corner. This card has an X as its third corner, so it explicitly does nothing on its third corner. And this card deploys one Grot or Orc unit from my deck onto another champion that I control. How is the turn system? So the, game, the resource system in this game is each player can do two things per turn, and those things are play cards, activate an ability on a hero like this or um, activate an ability on a hero like this or draw a card. So you don't, excuse me, you don't automatically draw a card every turn in this game like you do in a lot of others. So you'll notice here, this is another piece of interaction that this game has. Um, the Cursed Strike that my opponent played here makes me, makes me put a, take a card from my hand and shuffle it back into my deck. So I mentioned I wanted this to the left. So the reason why you wanted this to the left is this gets to double trigger when it comes into play 
off of the call of war because it triggers when it enters and then it triggers for the start of my turn as well so you'll see there's four skulls here i actually have four actions right now because this gave me two extra and i don't really want to play this card because it's mostly there for its discard effect so i'm just going to end my turn drawing four cards the way, the way you draw extra cards in this game is you draw one card at the end of the turn for every remaining action that you have. Oh, I do, I do have uh, I do have a Warhammer Primer actually on YouTube. Here's a quick rules document and intro video. There's no selective discard in this game like Thoughtseize because the designer said those effects suck to play against. That designer is correct. Those effects do a suck to play against. So this guy hit his fourth quarter and gave me a third action. So I think I'm going to play Call to War over here, which completes this next quest. And then I'm going to go ahead and activate the Belching Fire Belly to let me discard two cards. So he's going to go ahead and discard Bellowing Voice and the Sweeping Gore Grunto, which I don't really need right now. And this card, when it gets discarded, lets me grab an Ogre out of my deck. So a lot of the inter... So this game doesn't have uh, cards that you play. There isn't a priority system like Magic where you play cards in response to things. But this game does have... Um, a lot of positional base control cards. So uh, you'll there'll be cards that like say the unit across from you can't deal damage this turn, etc. Uh, this champion's a good example. So this champion says any damage dealt from abilities on this lane gets reduced by two. So it's very it's very similar to um, uh, prison style or you know like lantern. It's more lantern ish in its interaction than counter spell based. But not, not to the misery level that Lantern has, if that makes sense. So my turn starts. All these cards rotate. My Call of War happens, which lets me deploy another Pouncing Wolf Rider down here. You can play up to two copies of the same champion in your deck, so long as those champions don't make your points exceed uh, 20. So, for example, this champion you could theoretically have two copies of, but they'd be 10 and 10, so you can't... Uh, I don't think there's a zero cost... Actually, there is a zero cost orc, isn't there? I think there is. So, I think I'm... Yes, all, all of your cards, except if they are clunky... And I don't think I have any clunky cards in my deck. Um, rotate at the start of your turn. So I'm going to go ahead and play Battle Tactics over here to complete this last quest. Which flips up my Blessing again. Blessings tend to be super powerful. So this Blessing does three damage when it flips up. And then for the next two turns, it does three more as well. And I still have a lot of actions here. Um... I might just draw for the turn. They're, they're probably getting close to dead. Yeah, there is a graveyard. So there's a discard pile here. And then they actually just introduced a purge or basically exiled zone. So one of one of the things that um one of the things that the death faction got in this latest set was they gained um a abilities that activate from cards in the graveyard. They call them death acts. They're kind of kinda like flashback in a way. So all of my cards rotate. This one does three damage on its next corner. And then these two notably have X's. And X's means this card doesn't do anything on this corner. So on the fourth corner, this will do two damage again. And on the fourth corner, this will deal one damage and give me an action. But they don't do anything on this specific turn. All right. So we get kind of a sweet combo, combo-ish turn here. So I get to go ahead and start by activating the Belching Fire Belly. And I get to play some of my sweet synergy cards here. So I get to go ahead and discard Feed the Maw and Ride them Down, which are both cards that have effects when I when I discard them. So Feed the Maw does two damage. 
and ride them ride them down lets me deploy a beast unit from my hand which is sweet so getting to deploy this didn't take one of my actions for the turn because it happened from ride them all down and then this card forgotten arts this was this is an unaligned card so this was in our order deck as well so i can play this here and the ability completes this the third quest and this card rotates it past the fourth so it completes this blessing for us which gains us four life and draws us two cards and then my opponent here is at two so they're probably dead here again one of the things i mentioned earlier when we were playing if you end up with a lot of cards in your hand in this game that generally means you're you're either one drawing a lot of cards but generally it means you're not super efficient with your plays if you're if you're being efficient in this game a lot of the times your hand size is saying staying somewhere between like two and four cards can you gain more life than the starting total yeah so each of each of the champions that you include in your deck impacts your starting health total up to up to a maximum of 35 so all of these champions have a green a red number on them the red number is how they impact your starting health total so one of one of the ba the two balancing mechanics for champions is how um the balancing mechanics are how many points they cost how they modify your life total and um what their effects are past that so they're gonna die here because this will turn and deal three and this does two and this does one look at that we managed to win a game with our destruction deck look at that i don't i don't know if this deck's very good but it's got a lot of sweet synergies in it which as a as a timmy at heart this game has a lot of sweet synergies that you can find that enable if you're someone who's a sub we have a warhammer tcg channel in the subs discord where Pelly and i and one or two others poked into we're talking about different deck ideas there's also if you're not a sub there's a public discord for this game that you can pop in that is community people exchanging ideas and there's also also deck lists from last season that'll get updated for this season once we know what decks are good at this champion forge site the game's free to play and that it's free to install and you can uh, accrue cards similar to hearthstone or magic in without putting dollars in you can also buy physical singles and scan them in or there's a hearthstone style dusting and crafting system that you can use as well We got some loot. Tier one, obviously, right? Can a card only be scanned to a single account? How do I know someone else hasn't already scanned it? So on sites like TCG Player and other places that sell singles, they'll usually list cards as claimed or unclaimed. So a card can only be scanned by one person at a single time. However, if someone has claimed a card, they can scan it again to unclaim it and transfer the digital ownership of that card to another person. I've, I've ordered a few things off of TCG Player. When I played Paper at Gen Con, I ordered some singles off of TCG Player. And um, the I didn't have any issues with any of them being claimed when they said that they weren't. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about dusting an arena. Their crafting system is a little bit different. This is like, this is very similar to Hearthstone. And I'm not a huge fan of Hearthstone's crafting system, but when you get to pair a Hearthstone style system with a I can buy and scan physical card system, they um they mesh they mesh well together. So I can kind of have the best of both worlds. I can like buy singles that I want that are a price I'm okay with buying, but then also just craft things if a certain rare is expensive in paper. I 
That's true. That would be my request. I wish I could upgrade common and uncommon wild cards. That would be that would be ideal. Playing Order, Racking Branch Nymph. Again, want to put the Savage Boar Bosses down here on the right, the Mages on the left. wonder if they're playing Sylvanth, or if they're... It looks like they might be playing a uh, deck similar to what... Uh, the order deck we were playing before, which might run us over. That deck, that deck's probably the best deck I've played this season. Yeah, Hearthstone, Hearthstone, to be fair, Hearthstone has a lot of effects that are designed in a way that, um, they're designed in a way without paper in mind. Do all the factions have a different background board? They do not, um, there are faction-specific background boards, but, you can also just, you pick which board you want. All right, my opening hand kind of sucks here. I don't have a good ability. So like I have these Pouncing Wolf Riders, but I don't really have a good ability to get started on either of these. Like, discarding these to go get ogres doesn't really accomplish anything. I guess, I guess I could just ignore questing and just, like, start playing stuff out. That's technically a line, right? That's actually probably not a terrible line. So this is one of my two actions for the turn is activating this. And then I'll put Pouncing Wolf Rider here, which because this is a beast, it automatically rotates to its second corner. And its second corner gives me an extra action. And then I'll deploy this ogre here. Yeah, I agree, December. There's, there's a lot of information being conveyed in the space that you have, but once you digest how the actual mechanics of the game work a little bit, it's pretty, it's pretty clear what's going on a lot of the time. It could definitely be a little bit overwhelming if you're not familiar with what the cards are doing and like the rotating mechanics. Once you get the, the core gameplay down, you pick up on it really fast. Or at least, at least I did. That card is very good against us. So this blessing says damage from highlighted enemies cannot exceed two. So basically that means Firebelly's real bad because he was discard two cards to deal two damage. So now I think I need to just try and quest my guys. Uh, those are actually pretty, pretty okay hits. I do, I do have some things that deal smaller amounts of damage, but the question is going to be, can I race my opponent while they have this out, basically? They must not know the Shadow Steed trick. So, I'm going to go ahead and play this here, which this moves units around and my opponent's playing all mages so it doesn't do anything in terms of that but it gives me another action and it's an ability so it completes this quest which is nice i'm gonna go ahead and put call of war here and i think i'm just drawing two i guess i could deploy this here but i think i'd rather wait to try and complete this ability so i can get this quested down here as well take five here so the rend keyword that's a good question 
the rend keyword means this damage can't be prevented. So like those cards that say like prevent two damage or three damage or whatever, those don't, those, uh, when rend happens, they can't be reduced. So this'll do two, this'll do one twice. So they're down to 16. They've got three cards in their hand. If they have another forgotten arts, we're probably gonna be dead here. I can play Grot Ambush here, which completes the first two quests. These take a little bit of a little while to rotate through though. Which is a tough the tough part. I can use Forgotten Arts here to rotate this through his third quest. If I'm really lucky, I'll draw an ability and flip it over. Imagine this board, but it had two more characters from Dota, right? And side, side scroll it. I think I'm just drawing three here. Feed, now feed the maw is pretty good because when this is discarded, it deals two. So that'll let Fire Belly's activation still deal, um, still deal six damage. Now, if they have a Light of Sigmar and this deals some amount of damage, I could die on this lane here. Depending on, depending on what spell they have here and what their blessing is that flips up. Oh, they're just playing removal. That's, that's actually absurd for me. And the reason why that's absurd is while removing my unit prevents its effect, it lets me quest this sooner. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just do this here. They activated my trap card, so to speak. This gains me four and draws me two cards, which is sweet. I'm going to put back that. I think I'm happy with the rest of these. Because Beatback, Beatback lets me flip this one up here too. Now the, the problem is because I can only do two at most, I have to deal like seven separate instances of damage here basically. Yeah, that's a, that's a deal six. And then this is a, this is a deal four. So. Brutal. Yep. I think we might have actually been okay in that game if they hadn't flipped up the, uh, if they hadn't flipped up the, the blessing first that reduced all of our damage to two. Yeah, yeah, if they, like, if their first blessing had just been, like, a damage blessing, I would have gotten in, like, I don't know, probably double digits extra damage. All right, let's find, let's find one more before we wrap it up for a day. Yeah, yeah, this deck is basically, like, Madness Synergies, which is sweet. Are the blessings random? So you pick which four blessings are in your deck during deck construction, but you don't get to know which blessings go under which champions during the gameplay. So in addition to the variance of which cards you draw, that's the other variance point in this game is where, where your blessings are basically. So you, as you flip blessings, you kind of know percentage-wise which ones are likely to be where as you flip more of them. So you can have an approximate idea of what effect you're about to get, but not you don't know exactly until you're getting down to the fourth one.
Oh, do we just queue the same person? We queued the same person. So they're playing the same deck. We'll get to get a rematch here and see, uh, see if we can do better when they don't hit their blessing to start. Yeah. Yeah, that's true too, Pelly. My my hand that game, in addition to them flipping an ideal blessing to start, they um I also did not have a good start for questing my boar bosses. My opening hand was pretty awkward. And one of the things I really like about this game that made me continue to play it is that every it feels like when my decks are reasonable every game has relevant decisions in it it's not like magic where like sometimes you just don't draw lands or you draw too many lands and die and obviously there's games where like we just got done talking about how they had a game where if they had hit a different blessing i would have been better off but those those games there's obviously variance in the game but i feel like i have meaningful decisions in most games that i play huh so this card has a discard value on it, but I can also gamble with this one a little bit. I think I'm actually going to play this here to trigger trigger the ability. Now, if there's not a beast in my top three cards, I just played a card to trigger the ability, which feels a little bit bad, but I think, I think it's important to get my questing going here. Because this, this card is going to grab that uh, beast out of my deck which gives me which gives me extra extra actions and it gets, lets me complete this quest to kind of work through to hit my blessing ASAP so we'll drop this here and then the way this works with call to war this triggers twice so I get two extra actions this turn and then actually the cards in my hand kind of suck at the moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw four. Try and get set up here. We'll see if they realize to swap these now to get the extra five. Yep. So they draw two. And then this will deal five again. No, wait. Oh, because they... Oh, you have to... Uh, how many discard outlets do I have? Well, I you always have a discard outlet in this deck, Pope. Because fire, belt, fire Belly sits on the table. Oh, they put it on the same lane. Yeah, it has to go to the left, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, so... I get to go ahead and put Call to War here. Which is, again, going to go ahead and get me one of these next turn for this lane this time. So I want to go ahead and battle tactics here. So that way I can complete the second quest over here on that one. I'm going to get rid of the extra bellowing voice, I think. So ideally, they're not going to kill me for like two more turns. They're chunking me down to five here. Oh, six, because this is a beast. Gross. I forgot this is extra based on beast units. All right. Well, they didn't have forgotten arts, but they're probably still going to quest this this turn. And yeah, we might we might just be dead here. Their, their start last game might have been a little clunky as well. They have like a deal for here, and if this does some amount of damage also. Yep. Survey says... Oh, that doesn't... That only does two damage to me. That's good for us. So we take two, and this is doing five. Get to put Pouncing Wolf Rider over here. Which, I get a bunch of actions for the turn again. This is, this is one of the issues, like I mentioned, I'm not sure that this deck's actually good. Um, one of the issues is you stack up all these actions, but then you kind of don't have a ton to do with them a lot of the time. So like I have a bunch of game actions I can take here, 
but I only have so many positions on my board. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the hoops I'm jumping through might not be a big enough payoff. I think that's an accurate representation. Let's put this here. And then I can actually complete two quests next turn. Yeah. So next turn, next turn I can... Yeah, if they have if they have Dance of Doom, we're dead. So we might we might not get a next turn because they're through they're through eleven cards, so their chance of having Doom is pretty high. That's unfortunate. And like, even if I had had things there, I probably just get like, even if I had get another turn together, like they were at 17, I don't think I'm going to put 17 together, but a couple of my quests gain me some amount of life. So that could be good. That could have been good enough as well. Okay. Like I said, if we switch to the fire ability deck, we're probably going to lose a couple or one and two with it, you know, could have been, could have been worse. Uh, at any rate, thanks everyone for hanging out through the end. Uh, I'm going to be doing some random variety streams in the uh, later afternoons for my streams between now and when the next Magic set comes out. I'm probably going to do a little bit more of this next week and then maybe some Overwatch and other things as well. That's going to be it for me for today, though. I will catch all of y'all around later. Remember, if you want more content from myself, you can check out my website and my YouTube channel. And I'll be back uh, Monday morning about 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everybody uh, have a good one.